Hey all, welcome to the Weekly Bites. I know it's been a long time since we last published an episode, and I apologize. First I took a vacation, and then for the last two and a half weeks, I've been sick, which has really sucked because it's not a fun bug to catch. But anyways, you don't care about that. What you care about is tech news. That's why you're here, and we plan to deliver. So let's dive in. So first and foremost, today's big news is Samsung announced the Galaxy S10, S10 Plus, and the S10e. In, in descending order almost, uh, the S10e is the entry level Galaxy S10, followed by the S10, and then the S10 Plus, which the last two are kind of used to already. These phones look absolutely stunning with edge-to-edge -edge displays, only tiny cutouts for the, the front selfie cameras. The S10 Plus comes with two front cameras, three rear cameras. The S10 and the S10e come with a single front camera and three rear cameras. These phones sport between 8 and 12 gigabytes of onboard RAM and up to one terabyte of in-device storage. And if you opt for that one terabyte model and add a 512 gig micro SD card to the phone, you can get a whopping one and a half terabytes of solid state storage in your cell phone. Insane. They also sport a HDR 10-bit um, QHD display. I mentioned the display, it looks awesome. I've seen it in some photos, I've seen it in some videos. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on this phone and take a look and review it. In other Samsung news, Samsung also announced, and it's official, it's called the Galaxy Fold. I called it months ago. It's the first foldable cell phone from Samsung. It turns into a seven and a bit inch tablet when you open it up. It looks cool. It's something that I think we're all gonna have to get used to. It looks a bit clunky and big and thick in the, uh, the promo videos, but again, I've only seen it in promo videos, so we'll have to wait and see what it actually looks like in your hand. Dipping into some previous news, it looks like Apple is gonna ship iPhones containing only Qualcomm chips to stores in Germany. The Intel chips within are gone, and it looks like they've reverted to Qualcomm chips in all iPhone 7 and iPhone 8 models. It doesn't look like they've changed anything in the iPhone 10 or 10s models, though. So German users don't have to worry about current cell phones, current iPhones using non-Intel chips. Microsoft has already begun work on a build of Windows 10 that is due out in 2020. I mean, this could be a massive update given how early they've started. Presumably, we can expect the, uh, the regular two releases in, in 2019, but news of a 2020 build already is pretty impressive. In Google Pixel news, it looks like the Pixel 3 Lite phone that has been talked about, rumored, photographed, leaked all over the internet, will be a direct competitor to the iPhone XR. This is a mobile phone loaded episode of the Weekly Bytes, but the LG G8 is going to sport one of the coolest displays yet. I mean, Samsung's got Dolby, you know, Atmos or whatever front facing speakers, but the LG G8 is gonna have a vibrating display instead of traditional speakers. That's gonna be really cool. We've already seen it in a couple of Chinese brand cell phones, but this will be the first time it'll hit one of the mainstream uh, cell phone providers. For those wondering when DirectX ray tracing or DXR is going to hit it big, we might have actually found something that will light the fire under developers' butts, and that is the addition of DXR to the Unreal Engine 4 platform. There are a number of games already running on Unreal Engine 4. If devs take advantage of the DXR support and the new UE4 engine, we can start to see many, many more titles get ray tracing support. This will be excellent for NVIDIA and a real pain in the butt for AMD since the Radeon 7 still doesn't support ray tracing and may never. Sony decided that people with high-end watches shouldn't have to sacrifice a high-end watch in favor of a smartwatch. They've designed a watch band that the band itself is smart and you can put any watch timepiece on that band. So you can keep your Louis Vuitton or whatever high-end watch that you want, your Mont Blanc, those things are expensive. 
You can keep those timepieces, those traditional Swiss regular timepieces, and attach them to a smart watch band that'll still measure heart rates and do other things that kind of bridge that gap into the hybrid smartwatch space. It seems like not a week goes by without a new data leak announced. So, personal information of more than 14.8 million users of the 500px service or pixel service has been leaked online in a latest data breach. This was last week. The data was leaked in July 2018. It took them forever to get this released to the public and tell people that their data had actually been compromised. But wait, that's not all. 14.8 million people, pff, whatever. That's just a drop in the bucket. This 500 pixel data leak is just a small part of a huge release of 617 million data records of user details that have been leaked online from 16 different platforms, including Dub Smash, MyFitnessPal, Artsy, 500 pixel, and more. In another privacy slip up, Nest, yes, famous smart home brand Nest, has announced that they forgot to mention there's a hidden microphone in the Nest Secure home security smart hub. That base station that has the keypad on top uh, actually has a microphone in it. Quoting Nest, the on device microphone was never intended to be secret and should have been listed in the tech specs. At least they fessed up. There are a lot of corporations that would have stayed silent until somebody tore it apart, found the mic, and outed them publicly, and they might still have denied it. But Nest at least owned up and said, hey, we made a mistake. In our last piece of cell phone news, the Xiaomi Mi 9 was released recently and was spotted in the DxO Mark database with a score of 107, beating out the Pixel 3 from Google and the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. We've yet to see what the Galaxy S10 or S10 Plus will score, but that's a really respectable score. EA and Maxis. Yes, that Maxis. The creators of SimCity 2000. Oh, those were the days. Anyways, EA and Maxis have shown off some footage of a soon-to-be-released game pack for The Sims 4 called Strangerville. Is anyone else wondering why The Sims 4, a game released in 2014, over four and a half years ago, is getting brand new content and nothing else is? I, I can't believe the timing. I was actually talking to a colleague earlier today saying I wish that game developers would spend more time building quality games instead of focusing on this churn of annual releases of new games every, you know, 12 to 18 months. And here it is. EA and Maxis are doing it together. And I just wish that game developers, if you're all, anyone is watching, please, I would rather have a game that is built so well and so amazing that I want to play it over and over and over again and for years. And, you know, in 20 years, I'm going to look back and say, oh, what a great game. I would rather have that than have Battlefield 4, Battlefield 5, Battlefield 6 next year, Battlefield 7 the year after. I don't want that. It's just you guys are churning it out because at the end of the day, I think you want my $80 every year instead of making me a loyal follower for $80 once every four or five years. Anyways, that's a bit of a rant. Doesn't have much to do with the news. But anyways, The Sims is getting a release. It's coming soon. It's an addition. It's a four and a half year old game. Absolutely amazing. Props to EA and Maxis for putting that together. That's it for the Weekly Bites. I thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you stay informed when we release new videos. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down, leave us a comment, tell us what we could do better. We'll see you all next week. Talk to you later.